Well, we're visiting today with Billy Easter, one of the owners of the Wichita Livestock Auction. And Billy, we haven't talked in a long time. This is like old times. Yeah, it's been a while, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah, I miss talking to you. I do too. I tell you what, I enjoyed that as much as anything we did on Texoma Country Morning. But, you know, listening to all the news and information about this uh, coronavirus, COVID-19, and uh, just kind of watching the markets, and y'all didn't have a sale last week, and I was concerned about uh, what this was going to do to the markets. I know particularly here in Clay County, that's a big deal to us, and I'm sure it would be all across Texoma and your customers as well. Uh, what are you seeing? Well, you know, getting back to not having to sale last this past Wednesday, that was kind of a weather call along with what was going on Monday morning with the markets being down hard and uh, us already being pretty wet over the weekend and looking like it was going to be wet all week. So we didn't feel like we'd have uh, a good run, good representation, so uh, we decided to go ahead and call it off. Uh, kind of a combination of things. You know, with the attention that we are going to have a sale next week, the weather's going to be prettier, and everybody will kind of get this, you know, we'll kind of have some protocols uh, in place by the end as far as, uh, of course, you know, as, as we've moved on through the week, things have changed, uh, you know, they keep escalating a little bit, so we're kind of having to uh, think a way through this. Now, as far as the market is concerned, you know, this, this, is, this time of year with everybody, uh, nobody, not very many people got cattle out on wheat early, and so more cattle need to be bought to put out on wheat, and then, of course, spring's coming and summer grass, and everybody looking for it. Uh, we see we've got a lot of grazing out here, and, and it, you know, good demand for stocker cows, you know, big cows, pears, light kids, even up to 600, 650 pounds, you know, to go back and graze. Uh, the feeder market, because it kind of follows the, the futures market, is, is suffering a little bit. It's kind of trending down, but not as far as the, as the commodity board shows, which everybody kind of looks at that and sees, gives us some guidelines and uh, about all that. But the optimism in the market is, you know, and, and that, the trend is that uh, once we get through this, we're going to have good demand. We, you know, there's good demand for beef, good demand for grazing cattle. Uh, feed's going to be reasonable. You know, corn's not going to get out of line, so these guys can feed these cattle in these commercial yards uh, real reasonable. And so there's a lot of optimism in the market, and it's showing what they're still giving for these kids, even though the, the futures keeps dropping every week well you know the pretty good on the futures, the futures market deals with uncertainty anything any kind of uncertainty is going to cause problems there whether it's livestock or or stock uh, so i guess it just kind of follows that a little bit but the reality is you know you go to the grocery stores and people are still buying beef that's one of the things i guess people's hoarding uh in in that is you know, kind of like toilet paper and some of these other things they're buying beef and whether you're out at a restaurant or you're at home, people are going to have to eat. So I think you're right. The beef demand should continue strong. Yeah, and it's going to be that way. Now, what the, the concern is, it may be four to six weeks down the road after all these people that have bought up all this meat and put it in their freezers, and, uh, they're not going to be coming back buying more. And well, that's and true. If we shut down these restaurants and, and places where people go out to eat, and, uh, then maybe the demand for for me, it's not going to be as good. I hope, you know, people still have to eat. We still have a product that's very desirable, uh, the number one, in, in, you know, protein source. So, you know, there's a lot of demand. Packer cows, for instance, uh, you know, not a lot of cows run this time of year anywhere. So Packer cows have been get, going higher. And this week, Monday, uh, Packer cows jumped up $8 in the meat. And I heard they It'll be higher next week because of the real short sales. So, so if you're thinking about doing that market for somebody that's got some cow cows, an old bull, or something that they need to sell, well, you know, that will be a lot higher instead of cheaper. And, uh, you know, the feeder cattle may be softer for a little while. The grazing calves can be a little softer, but not near. I mean, there's just a lot more optimism 
down to than what the teacher shows us, you know, what the teacher tells us. So, so ultimately, technically, and, on, technically say, fundamentally, we're in good shape. That's good to know. But, but technically and fundamentally, both we're in good shape, but fear has driven this market down, you know, stop, it's just falling the stock market, more or less, and all. And, you know, maybe that's a concern that this kind of line out there that nobody's talking about is $22 oil. Sure. You know, we get that oil as cheap as it is. It's going to have an effect on things if that doesn't turn around. And uh, it may not turn around as fast as we want it to. So the bottom line is if you've got some cattle that are ready to go and you can get to your lots because it's not so muddy, this this next week would be a good time to bring them to sale. I think so. I think as long as, you know, people are going to – you know, right now, for the next uh, couple of months, these guys are still wanting to stock up this, you know, they want to put this this, this way they can get cheap game and they can overcome a lot of things. They need the cattle. They think those cattle, by the time they come back to market, uh, they will be, this thing will work its way through. There's still a lot of optimism in the market. That, well, that, can that change? You know, who knows what could happen uh, if, if people go to, uh, you know, if we go to losing some people unexpectedly, if we get our hospitals overwhelmed, uh, you know, uh, like they are some, in some places. But, you know, so we look at the news every day hoping we can see that we're beating the curve, that we're getting ahead of it a little bit. And as we see that news and the government, you know, on top of things kind of controlling the outs. I know a lot of the conversations I've had this past few days after I got done with them, I thought, that's crazy. I never dreamed I would be talking about the things we're talking about today. And the very idea that we're concerned about uh, number of population, you know, is is even a concern. But I think pretty much we, we've got to seem to have a good handle on it. Uh, people are being proactive and doing what they need to do. I feel like there will be some issues. Uh, but uh, from I know here in Clay County, I feel like we're in good shape. Uh, you know, and they, I'm, I'm optimistic, but also realistic as well. You know, we're going to set, we, we, I just got off the phone with Jesse Carver with uh, Livestock Marketing Association. He gave us ideas about getting some protocol in place about we might do things a little differently. You know, people come to the sale, we might not have a sit-down cafe, it's all take-out, carry-out. Right. Uh, maybe limiting uh, the amount of spectators watching the auction. Right. Uh, taking checks out to people, you know, to not so everybody doesn't crowd around uh, trying to pick up a check or, you know, there's, there's some little things like that that we can do to uh, comply with what the, you know, of course, with uh, and, that, and with what the governor is giving an executive order about that, you know, we're not a social event. This is, a, a, you know, we're a business that... A vital uh, business. Agriculture keeps you know, commerce going. And Absolutely. So we need to operate. Absolutely. Yeah, I can't even imagine. Now, granted, you got to take some procedures, you know, maybe even get some hand sanitizer. But i got to tell you, Billy, anybody that's been in a cell barn, they're probably immune anyway. <laughs> yeah. You've been around one for very much. You know, just by thought. Right. <laughs> yeah. All right. You know, and we don't have, you know, the people that are coming here aren't coming from off somewhere, I mean, you know, it's pretty much, uh, uh, you know, I think cattle people are kind of rural people mostly. Sure. Uh, yeah, you know, I think we'll be fine, but we are going to continue to operate. Well, that's good we're to know. That was... to and, and we're, they're going to get us some exceptions by next week. And they're working on that right now. And Great. Make sure well, that was my main question. Change some protocols up here for me, trying to comply, like you said, with what hand sanitizer around, carry mm -hmm. out in the cafe only. Yep. Maybe limit the amount of people that can come into the ring. Just maybe, uh, not just everybody can, right. you know, there's going to be a lot of kids sure. out of school the next yeah. couple of weeks. Maybe, you know, not allowing kids in the ring, you know, keeping their numbers down. They're the, sure. They're the germ spreaders. They're the kids. There you go. <laughs> That's true. That's I love true. them, but they still have germ spreaders. I love them, but they scare me. <laughs> 
All right. Well, Billy, thank you so much for your time. Appreciate you as always. And uh, I just thought it'd be, uh, I know a lot of folks are asking about the market and it's a major financial concern to, to each of our counties. And uh, I knew you'd be the expert. Well, I definitely don't have a crystal ball and I do have, but I try to stay on top of it. And, and anybody has, you know, wants to call or, you know, ask, have a question, I'd be sure we got That's good to know. I think we'll be okay. All right. Well, Billy, thank you so much. Appreciate your time. You bet. Hey, Mike, I'll tell you one more other thing. We can look at fat cattle bringing dollar twelve to fifteen. Yeah. Uh, April live cattle at ninety four. Yeah, you know, but there's a you know seventeen dollar basis in that. So that tells you that they're you know they're willing to go out here and give. They're moving that product as long as they keep moving that product, we're in good shape. Perfect. That's good to know. That that is, we need some good news, and that is good news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's pretty good. There is some good news out there. <laughs> That's the good part. That's right. Well, we got a good rain this past week, yeah, and we're really going to have a really good spring. Too. Wheat pastures looking up. Over. Yeah. That looks good. All right. All right. Well, thank you, sir. Appreciate you. Yeah. Thank you, man. All right.